Hello, I'm Bartosz, the convener of the Data Analytics Working Group, also known as DOG. And I'm Michael, a member of the Working Group, but also the convener of its cousin, the Young Data Analytics Working Group. Together, uh, we are going to discuss the highlights from the data analytics space over the past 12 months, the hot topics and upcoming issues that we expect to be hearing more about, and share also our favourite sources of CPD, specifically for actuaries interested in data analytics. Two thousand and eighteen was a year where data was barely out of the news, and sadly, sometimes not in a good way. There were definitely some good, bad, and ugly stories. Actuaries should have been given plenty to think about, given the headlines. Michael, which do you think was the biggest story of two thousand and eighteen? Well, close to the hearts and minds of many was the scandal involving Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, which just grew and grew during the early part of the year. The scandal started as a massive privacy violation, but quickly morphed into discussions around fake news and alleged attempts to interfere with elections. This scandal changed perceptions about privacy, use of data analytics, a real paradigm shift in many ways. What else has happened? We all started getting emails from companies that collected our data, sometimes from companies we'd never even heard of. This was all thanks to the European Union and its far-reaching GDPR regulations, which, amongst other things, forced companies to give much more consideration so that the data they collect and how they use it. Yes, Michael, uh, I remember all of these emails. Interesting timing with the scandal and the regulatory changes being made. Any news closer to home? Of course. We had confirmation that Australian consumers would be getting greater rights to access their data held by companies. This will start with banking, but then rapidly move to other sectors of the economy. I'm extremely excited about this one, which will likely create enormous opportunities and threats to existing business models as data becomes increasingly portable. But staying on the issue of privacy and ethics, the Australian Human Rights Commission launched a widespread review into the ethics of technology, with large focus on artificial intelligence. This review will run for a while, but we'll be watching with interest and will hopefully have some important things to say at the right time. I agree, Michael, that these are important developments in the Australian market. Uh, the themes of data governance, data ethics and privacy are likely to continue. I think that we should also call out the recognition of actuaries by the Institute of Analytics Professionals of Australia at the Top 25 Analytics Leaders event. Um, three of the Top 25 leaders uh, have some association with the profession, right? You're right, Bartosz, and huge congratulations to Matt Kuppenholt, Victor Bijanov, and particularly Mitch Previtt, our former working group convener. This was a brilliant showcase of the value that actuaries create in data analytics. I think that we need to continue pushing this message to the wider market and community. There is a lot to be proud of. The profession also had a significant achievement in the education space this year. Exciting changes are being made. Michael, would you like to tell us more about it? The new foundation program, which replaces part ones, will include an introductory topic on supervised and unsupervised machine learning techniques from 2019. The associateship program also has a new subject coming, core data and statistical analysis, which will be taught by accredited universities from 2020. Creation of the syllabus for the subject was a great example of collaboration between both working groups, the Actuaries Institute and accredited universities. There will be sessions to talk about what this means for you soon. Looking forward, there are also plans to build a fellowship module to focus on more complex applications of modern data and statistical analysis techniques. Talking about the future, Bartosz, what key trends in the industry are we expecting to see next year? The data analytics toolset, uh, which is techniques, software and platforms, will continue to evolve and there is no sign of this advance slowing down. Actuaries recently showcased their passion for tools and data sets in weapons of mass deduction video competition. Where the videos cover topics on the latest machine learning techniques, software packages and valuable data sources. And at this point, Bartosz, it is important to call out the winner of this competition, Andrew Shu, with his video taking us through geospatial analysis. Congrats, Andrew. Well done. Going back to the key trends. Well, businesses growing demand for faster, deeper and more impactful insight will increase focus on self, service 
integrated analytics platforms and allow organizations to dive into data and drive business strategies in more cost-effective ways. But there is also such a broad spectrum of data analytics maturity in and outside of financial services that there will be endless opportunities for analytics professionals to contribute at different stages of the data journey. Data science is booming and it's here to stay with a recent surge in the number of data science and analytics professionals. It has been said before that actuaries were the original data scientists. And so a great opportunity lies before us for the year ahead to continue advance our brand and our reach. Demand for actuaries in the local market will be strong as businesses look for people to help them design and execute their analytics strategy and to discover the potential of their data. The financial sector in particular will be stimulated by open banking and comprehensive rights to data, which poses many challenges and also significant opportunities. And what about the Royal Commission? Well, good question, good question. Changes in the regulatory environment will also create opportunities. The implications of the Royal Commission are yet to be fully understood, but it's clear that data analytics will have a role to play in responding to the issues highlighted over the recent months. A number of other changes impacting financial services are also drawing deeper into the actual talent pool. Uh, for example, there is IFRS 17, uh, large M&As and reforms to health insurance. Service provision and mass customization are increasingly reliant on data and predictive models and actuaries are well placed to inform the future of these areas. Thanks Bartosz. There's clearly a lot of demand for actuaries with a data analytics skill set. With so much to expect in the next year and beyond, actuaries need to ensure that they continue their professional development, especially when the upcoming changes are likely to require new skills. Yes, you're right, Michael. Uh, for actuaries looking to learn more on data analytics, where can they go? The Institute works hard to produce resources for its members, and there are a few things that come to mind. First, the Institute's online magazine, Actuaries Digital, has produced many articles on data analytics this year. One of the more popular articles was entitled Becoming an Analytics-Based Insurer, which gives a senior actuary's viewpoint on how to develop analytics capability in your organisation. The Institute has run a number of events over the year, most of which are recorded and are now made available on the website. A highlight of these has to be the series of insight sessions by Andreas Vijaygas, which gives a crash course on statistical machine learning in an accessible way. Another new initiative that we've seen over the last 12 months is the introduction of podcasts with up-to-date views from leading actuaries in a convenient package. The interview with Aaron Cutter on managing an analytics team is well worth listening to. We also produced a podcast on ethics and another on how the government can better use data, which was also the subject of the Institute's latest Dialogue Thought Leadership paper. And in August, we launched a series of data analytics newsletters, which I hope all of you are now reading, but have been very well received. Well, Michael, what about the sources beyond the Actuaries Institute? There is a huge amount out there for people who are keen to learn. I would recommend anyone interested to check out the growing number of data science meetup groups that regularly discuss topical issues and learn new skills. There are also lots of free or low cost online courses that will teach some of the theory or application of data science. We've been a fan of the John Hopkins course on Coursera. For those keen to contribute, uh, what activities can people get involved with? Well, Bartosz, as you know, the Data Analytics Working Group and the Young Data Analytics Working Group are always on the lookout for people with energy and enthusiasm. Our aim is to promote data analytics within the profession, but also to showcase the value actuaries offer in this space more broadly. Good point, Michael. Or if you just want to share what you're doing beyond traditional work, you could write an article or be interviewed for a podcast. So if you are keen, please send your interest through. We want to extend our thanks to all members of the DOG, Young DOG, and people at the Institute who have continued to tirelessly contribute to actuaries in the data analytics space. Thanks, Bartosz. And for me, it's been a really rewarding experience. Thanks, Michael, and thank you to everyone for joining us. Thank you.